So, Jamie Foxx is your mentor. Excuse me, how on earth did that happen? Like, how did you guys meet? And what are some of the biggest lessons he's taught you? Um, I met Jamie originally. Um, I was I was a movie extra on a set called Sleepless. Um, and the movie's actually on Netflix, I think now, but we were on that movie set and I was just a movie extra. He, uh, he called me Tupac Brian. He thought I looked like Kobe and Tupac. So it started out like that with a joke. Your Christmas movie, the app that stole Christmas, is out now on Netflix. It features yourself, Ray J, and the incredible Jackie Long. What is this movie about? And tell the people why they should go and see it. Well, you should definitely go and see it because look at the cast that she just named. You got Jackie <laughs> Long, you got Ray J. Shout out to uh, Monica uh, Floyd, uh, AKA Dollface, because she, um, she's the director of it. And uh, and she's a black female, so that's super dope, you know. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like you know, it's super dope. One to have a, a African American, and and two to have a a um a female. You know, you guys don't get enough credit, but you guys are brilliant. Mm -hmm. Like some of the uh, really the smartest people in the world are females. But uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Leonard Jefferson sent it to me. The guy who took it. What? Yeah, he took that's it and he sent it to me. I interviewed him. <laughs> Hold on, I, I gotta show you something. <laughs> let's see if I got, let's see how, if I, if I have it right here. Oh uh, man. Wow. This is like my lucky call. This is like crazy for me to have. Dang, I hope I, I hope I can. Aha. Uh -huh. I have what? something for you. Wait. <laughs> you see the picture and then you see me? <laughs> I play, I play. complain how about you i'm fabulous thank you what have you been up to during quarantine uh work 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 that's so good so let's get into it then so for everyone that's meeting you for the first time can you tell us who you are and how you got started with your music and acting um my name is jay young mdk the way i got started with music i, I just it was just something that i've done since i was younger yeah um I've always done music. I just started taking it serious, like maybe at the age of 15 um, and just opportunities kept coming. So, um, yeah. So as far as music, I'm, it's something I've always done. As far as acting, I started dabbling and dabbing into it like later on. And I started all out as just like an extra. Um, like I feel like most people do. You just start out as an extra. You yeah. get your feet wet and then you start auditioning <laughs> for roles and then you you know, start getting roles and then it just goes so on and so on. Yeah, absolutely amazing. How did you come up with your name and especially the MDK part? What does that stand for? Okay, so originally they used to call me the Million Dollar Kid. So, and um, I went by Jay Young as well. So it used to be like Jay Young, the Million Dollar Kid, but then oh, yeah. we like abbreviated it and I just wanted it to be MDK. Cause I didn't really want that million dollar kid. And then, um, and then as far as the name Jay Young, there was still like other people that may have like a J dot young, J dash young slash young underscore young, all type of different things. So, um, I, I ended up just making a J Young MDK. Sick. It has a really good ring to it. It's really good. I, I caught my Thank attention you. the second I read it. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Jamie Foxx is your mentor. Excuse me, how on earth did that happen? Like, how did you guys meet? And what are some of the biggest lessons he's taught you? Um, I met Jamie originally. Um, I was I was a movie extra on a set called Sleepless. Um, and the movie's actually on Netflix, I think now. But we were on that movie set, and I was just a movie extra. He, uh, he called me Tupac Brian. He thought I looked like Kobe and Tupac. So it started out like that with a joke. And then yeah. um, I went home and I was like, you know what? I got to let him know. Yeah. That, um, I got to let him know that I do music. And I ended up coming back the next day. I let him know that I did music. He listened to it. And that was the beginning of the relationship. Um, I see. And so many words. That was just like the start of it. And then it grew over the years. And um, we started working and just different things. 
Amazing. Wow. Um, has he taught you any big lessons or anything that will stick with you forever? Um, like I always say with him, yes, he tells me a lot of different things as well as like Dave Brown and Atari and his whole camp. Yeah. But the main thing is just like looking at the way that he um looking at the way that he moved. He's a great person, like looking yeah. at the way that he care for his family, treat his family, his friends, um, the way he conduct his business, the yeah. way that he worked extremely hard. It's just so many different things yeah. that you just learn just by watching. Yeah. He's, so he's that's what I would say um, with him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a goat for real. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely agree with you. So your Now or Never project is absolutely amazing. Um, can you tell me a little bit behind the inspiration? Like what was behind it and why you decided to name the project Now or Never? Um, the reason I named it Now or Never because at that specific time, it just felt like my back was against the wall mm -hmm. and it just felt like, man, this, it got to happen right now. You know, yeah. like, like right now, like, all my eggs are in and all the work is in. I'm like, I'm putting everything on this project. Um, I'm gonna push it as hard as possible. This yep. needs to be the one to take me to the next level. I can't mm -hmm. wait to the next one. I can't wait to the next day. Yep. Nothing, you know, like it was just like, that was, that was just the whole mindset. And I feel like once I adopted that mindset, it changed everything for me. Yeah. Like things started happening. Like I just started seeing everything fall into place because yeah. I just locked in and got extremely serious. Yeah. It's like a snowball effect, right? Like once you start, you've got your head in the game. I like, there's no excuse. It has to happen. Everything just starts reading off of that. I love that. Energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. That yeah. You released two albums on the same day, one being R&B Aqua and the other rap being Black. I really love Absolutely. and appreciate your work ethic. What inspired you to do something like this and release them on the same day? Um, I just wanted to give the people like a, a dope project originally. Yeah. And I was just like, this is too much music to be on one project. And yeah. it's too diverse to be on one project. So because even within my raps, I'm diverse. Like I could give you like the club, I could give you conscious, I give you so many things just within the rap realm and the same thing in R&B. So if I put it like all on one project, it would yeah. just be way too much to digest. <laughs> so um, I was like, okay, let me, um, let me give them two albums, Aqua, cause that's the mood of the R&B. Like it's, it's a vibe, you know, it's a real, dope vibe you could be on the island you could be doing anything and, and aqua's you know gonna be a good thing but then you have black which is like rap and it's hip-hop and it's yep. turned up and it's conscious it's everything in one so i was like okay let me release both of these and then let me release them both on the same day because i nobody's ever done that um yeah. with two different genres yeah. so i was like okay let me do something new i'm all about trying to make history yeah I love so, that. I love that. <laughs> or do something to where it's like, this is what Jay Young did. Like, what's yeah. his legacy? What did he have going on? What did he that's, do that's different than anyone else? I'm always trying to think of the next thing. That's really sick. That is so fly, man. So you star in Meek Mill's short film, Wins or Losses. Can you tell us a little bit how you got that little role? And what was it like working with Meek? Did you meet him? Did you work together on Yeah, I, I worked with Meek. That was super dope, actually, because I'm a fan of Meek. Um, Meek is super dope. And yep. to, to be able to get in that, shout out to um, Spike Jordan. He directed it. Um, it happened through him and my dude Malachi and my dude David. Yeah. Um, they all put it together. They was like, yo, this will be the perfect dude. Because before that, I um, I started in Futures. No, or maybe after that. But <laughs> it was it was just like the the whole connection there. And everybody was like, yo, you need to put him in it. And then I, it it opened up the door. That and that led, that led to more things. So it was real dope. That is sick. And it goes to show like when you really work hard and you give your all to something, people will just speak your name and you continue to get recommended for other things. So I love that. Right. That's true. Yeah, That's true. I love that. So That's you true. have a campaign releasing 50 songs in 50 weeks. That is just incredible. What is your reason for doing this campaign? And are you recording songs as you go along or are they like you've got hundreds on your computer sitting in a vault somewhere ready to just drop? Oh. <laughs> I, I do both because you know it's just depend on what I feel like for the week. I'm all, yeah. I'm always recording and it's just like okay this for the week, okay that for the week, okay I already got something for this. Like I always have music. Yeah. Um, that's my profession. So yeah. it's like I'm always gonna have music, but a lot of it I just record and then I'm just like oh drop this tomorrow or drop this for next week or drop the one that I did two weeks ago today. Like it's no formula to it honestly. Yeah. It's just 
it's just I love music and it's just like this is the theme for the week and um yeah so so that's that and, and as far as 50 songs 50 weeks I just wanted to during the pandemic have something to do and keep myself busy and give yeah. the fans and friends and people something to look at and, and be a part of and pay attention to and see it grow and yeah. see it happen right before their eyes like they they're like I witnessed this I know it happened you know yeah so that's pretty much my thing behind that amazing it's so like inspirational seeing you be so consistent like 50 weeks is just like two weeks short of a year so it's crazy yeah. to see that back-to-back -back energy being put out and I know it's going to inspire a lot of other people watching you so yeah that's really so absolutely cool. maybe it'll inspire someone to do 100 songs 100 weeks or something like that <laughs> I don't know but just um yeah absolutely inspiring yeah that would be sick man so can you give me three words that describe J Young MDK what would you say um hard worker um motivated yeah or motivating as well like motivate people yeah um and just blessed i would say blessed yeah just blessed to be here blessed love that love that great choice of three words who is your biggest inspiration in life my biggest inspiration is my daughter Aww. and my mom yeah Aww biggest inspiration amazing how old is your daughter she's six she's right here say hi say. hi she's so cute <laughs> thank you thank you she, uh, yeah so she she's been I, I put her in the music as well so if you listen to my 50 songs 50 weeks i have a song called um we can make it and she's on that song as well is she singing rapping she's singing amazing sings. i love yeah. it is that a goal of hers in the future too to get into music oh yeah she loved to sing i didn't even push it on her she just <laughs> loves music so i'm like okay i'm gonna get you going <laughs> <laughs> i love it give her a head start right <laughs> amazing so with an amazing career giving her a head start. exactly exactly <laughs> oh you've frozen a little bit uh oh did you freeze yeah am i still there you are. Yeah. hey how are you I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What happened last time? You just disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I, I forgot what happened. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> we were right in the middle, and I went. I feel like the phone died, but I don't know. If, I don't remember. <laughs> but I remember it was just like abrupt. I don't know what happened, but we back. It's all good. We are back in action. We are okay. back. Be Let's better. jump straight back into it. So, right up. What kind of music did you listen to, and what kind of artists inspire your incredible sound? Um, music that I've listened to growing up. I mean, it varies. It's 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 like, it was like so much music. Like I listened to Jay Z. I listened to Nas. I listened yep. to Outkast. I listened to um. Michael Jackson, Prince. Yeah. Listen to Sade. Ugh. Listen to, uh, I mean, <laughs> literally everything. Snoop Dogg. Yeah, Big all L, the great. Big Pun. All the great. Um, freaking Rick Ross, of course. Yeah. Like it's just, it's like literally, it's just so many different things. Like, cause my mom used to listen to a lot of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of my family listened to a lot of music. So I've always like been around music since I was little. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so when it comes to my influence, even like Norvana, like just different type of genres as well. Right. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to uh, music, like I'm able to channel a lot of different things because I'm a fan of a lot of different um, genres and different people. That's incredible to hear. Like your music is a fusion of all the greatness that you listen to. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank <laughs> You're you. You're welcome. So you just released your brand new album entitled White. Congrats on your project. It sounds amazing. So you've already Thank got you. an R and B. You got a rap project. What made you decide to make this one an alternative project? Um, because the, like like we just said, like I listen to so much music, and yeah. um, I know I, I, I like my catalog is diverse. And I really wanted to show the world and let them know, like, okay, I can rap, I can sing, I can do alternative. Yeah. Really, there's no, there's no uh, limit to it. And I didn't want to be put in any type of box. So I purposely just wanted to create a, a, a different project that I consider, like, like you said, Black is rap, um, Aqua's R&B, White mm -hmm. is alternative, but it's also just other. 
You know, it's like so many different vibes. I still have rap in it and I still have R and B in it. Yeah. And it's alternative and it's pop. You know, um, I listed it as an alternative album, but it, it still have other elements in it, um yeah. as well. But like soon as I just as soon as I started it off with in the way and everything, I just wanted to like go straight alternative, but do it in the way that it's never been done before. At least yeah. I've never heard it done before. Right. That hook is very like alternative and rock and everything but then mm -hmm. i'm still rapping on the record as well that is so. so sick you're like a man of so many different talents and it's you're right show everybody what you've got you're right <laughs> thank you thank you where i was at with everything um yeah. when i was white i just wanted to complete the the collection like if it's a trilogy of like different sides of me i feel like if you get black aqua and white you could yep. understand me like musically yeah. you could understand I love it. I'm so excited about all your projects and I can't wait to keep hearing what you keep putting out next. Oh, thank you. So, your Christmas movie, The App That Stole Christmas, is out now on Netflix. It features yourself, Ray J, and the incredible Jackie Long. What is this movie about? And tell the people why they should go and see it. Well, you should definitely go and see it because look at the cast that she just named. You got Jackie <laughs> Long, you got Ray J. Shout out to uh, Monica. Uh, Floyd, uh, aka Dollface, because she um, she's the director of it, and uh, and she's a black female, so that's super Thanks. dope, you know. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, it's super dope. One to have a, a African American, and and two to have a a um a female. You know, you guys don't get enough credit, but you guys are mm -hmm. brilliant. Like some of the uh, really the smartest people in the world are females, but. Uh. You know, so. <laughs> Yeah, so so that's super dope. You guys should go see it, A, because it's a funny movie. It's a funny family movie, uh, great comedy in there. Uh, but also it has family values in there as well. Um, it's the holiday season. It's Christmas coming up right now. So why wouldn't you spend your holiday season with your family watching a holiday movie? And, um, and, and yeah, it's just about it's just about how technology is kind of taking over family time, and people are really just like so into these apps and so into you know yeah. different things. But I'm not gonna spill all the tea, but I would say that's why you should go and see it. Yes, everyone, listen to Jay Young MDK and go and see the At the Store Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> it was recently your birthday and your incredible mentor Jamie Foxx's birthday too. Did you guys do anything to celebrate? And are you excited for his new movie Soul coming out Christmas Day? I believe. What? Of course, I'm excited for uh, <laughs> Jamie Foxx's new. Uh, first of all, I'm excited for every Jamie Foxx movie. Like that's Fact. my favorite. Actor. Uh, he's my favorite actor. Between it's a toss up between him. And Denzel. Oh my God! I was just gonna say Denzel. Denzel. He's my mentor, so he so he wins. But honestly, they're tied for me. You know, um, they're tied for me. Yeah, it, that that he's making history too to be the first black lead in a Pixar. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so that's that's major. So we gotta support that. We gotta go and, and watch that and go mm -hmm. check that out. Please go do that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's just that's super dope. And and. Uh, yeah, that's super dope. Just make sure you go check that out. And, and as far as our birthdays, yeah, on my birthday, um, we did a super dope dinner. So that was dope. And they gave me a toast and everything. So that I was on Instagram. <laughs> Jay Young, happy birthday, man. To young talent, to young, amazing people, uh, to the young talent here, man. And to, to, to all of us taking this and pushing love and art to the next level. On some pimping, dial. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's okay. go get it. Yeah. yeah, and then I know for Jimmy's birthday, um, we just did like a super dope Zoom call that his uh, daughter put together and his whole family put together, and it was just like twenty or thirty of the closest friends and family, and and just support supporters, and just like we all just gave them his flowers. Yes, I love that. You guys are a great team. It's incredible. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, if you were stuck in an elevator with one person, who would you want it to be and what would you say? If I was stuck in the elevator with one person? Yeah, it can be anyone, um, dead or alive. It would, it, it, dead or alive? That's hard. <laughs> if it was dead or alive, it would be Tupac. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, if it was dead or alive, it would be Tupac. And uh. I, 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 I don't know what I would ask Tupac, but I would just, I would just be like, man, you, 
you the goat and yeah. uh man i just respect you so much like everything that you and you're so talented yeah so that's what like i want to it, <laughs> it would be between him or michael jackson for me <laughs> oh yeah michael too it's when you say that or alive it gets extremely hard because there's Fact. so many people like that you would want to be in there with between them then i may want to be in there with like uh, muhammad ali because he like i respect the hell out of him right everything for and what he brought to the table and he's like a true champion a real champion in life and in the, in the sport of boxing so it, it, it will go crazy <laughs> <laughs> there's so many greats you're right man so, so for, anyone, greats. <laughs> for anyone so that is struggling with their dream or worried about their future what advice would you give to them to keep going or technical advice what would you say if they're struggling with their dream yeah like they want to give uh, up I will let them know that everybody struggle with their dream. Nobody, nobody in this world, maybe like 1%, but besides that, the other 99% of the people that uh, were chasing their dreams, like it was bumps in a row, like they were going up and then it went down. And then it may have went down again, even when they thought they were at their lowest, it went a little further down. Then it went up, like, like even with me, uh, it's not like, you know, it, it looks pretty and everybody see all of the, all of the um, spotlight coming on me right now, but imagine how many years I've been doing it. I've been doing it probably 10 years, if I have to think about it, so young, yeah. So it's not like, it's not like an overnight thing. And I had many failures, <clears throat> but I never let any failure uh, make me feel like a failure, yeah. you know? Because I know, I understand, it's, a, it's, a, it's like chess and it's a long-term game. <laughs> If you're uh, looking for a vacation, you're trying to make it all happen right now in one day, then this ain't the game for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you, like you should just go play the, play the lottery and hope you win because that's going to be your best shot at success if you want it overnight. But if you are willing to uh, stay down, grind, believe in yourself, continue to hustle, yep. get a great team, uh, surround yourself with good people, yep. put out good energy. Yeah. Uh, um, and just keep working, it's no, it's no way that you could consistently do something for three years, for five years, for 10 years and not get better at it. It's yeah. just impossible. And if you don't get better at it, then it's not that you shouldn't be doing it. It's not messing <laughs> with you. I hear that, I hear that. You're right, man. Stay the long game and it's like a game of chess. I love that advice. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you learned anything new about yourself now that you're actively working in the industry, surrounded by your heroes? And are you doing anything or is any of your now traits surprising you? Like, are you more consistent than you thought you were? Are you waking up earlier than you thought you were? Does anything surprise you about yourself? Um, I, I don't, I, I can't say that anything um, surprised me. I just, um, I, the, the same, I, I'm the same person no matter what room I'm in and yeah. I'm the same person no matter uh, who I am right now today, I was 10 years ago. Like, yeah. I just feel like more people are, um, like, as far as, like, the work ethic and working yeah. hard and everything, I just think more people are, like, paying attention to it. But um, the consistency has always been there and everything. I've always been grinding. It's just, I feel like it's just getting on a bigger level. And then you get around other people and you learn things. Mm. You know, like, like I, I will say my work ethic enhanced even more because now you're now you're playing for higher stakes or it's yeah like, it's like playing in high school versus playing in college versus playing in the nba yeah you know you have to reprove yourself every time yeah. and you start from the bottom every time like you know once once you get around like jamie foxes and people like that it's, you're not on that level you know <laughs> and, and i know i'm not on that level so yeah it's like you have to you, you're a rookie all over again you mm -hmm. know Mm. And, and that's what it is yeah so you'll just, get there, I, though. That same rookie mentality and, and try to go prove myself not to everybody else but just prove myself to myself yeah because that's what you ultimately have to uh do it for as well you can't be out here living for other people you can't be out here trying to be you know competing with people or competing yep. with their 10th year or in your first year or none of that you know yeah that's amazing that you're only in competition with yourself when you're right. Be better than you were yesterday and just focus on your leg. That's it. That That's is it. <laughs> so <laughs> when you're not working on music or acting, for the viewers listening that want to get to know Jay Young some more, what do you like to do in your spare time? What do you do for fun? Um, fun? I mean, I, I love working. 
I like watching like sports and watching movies when I get a chance. I don't get a chance to watch them too often because I like I'll start watching the movie and then I start like thinking about a million other things I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing. So you know, but um, at, I have a daughter. I love spending time with my daughter. Yep. Um, family, um, traveling if I can. Like every chance I get, I like to just get up and go somewhere, <laughs> even if it's still in the states like L.A., New York, Miami. Just like shooting wherever I can go. Um, I love to just get away. I love that. Do you have a favorite food or anything? Food? Yeah. What's your favorite food? I'm a seafood lover. Ah. I love <laughs> Fish, I love lobster, I love crab. I just love, love lobster. <laughs> um, I love seafood. So I love I, it. I, I, my favorite would be like lobster or, or fish, like red snapper or whatever. Oh, perfect. Fish. I love all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, love it. All, shrimp, everything. Yes, oh, shrimp is my favorite. It's my favorite seafood. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Shrimp is amazing. I love oh, man. <laughs> it just goes with everything. You're right. <laughs> right. So, right. in the midst of these troubling times, what are you most grateful for? And do you have any New Year's resolutions? Uh, I didn't hear the second part, but you, uh, you said in the midst of the struggling times, what am I yeah. most grateful for? Yeah, in these times now. Um, just to be alive, to be honest with you, if you think about uh, 2020, if you if you really think about it, like so much stuff happened. It's yeah. really even hard to remember how many people that we lost this year. And you're talking about not even like you're talking about famous people, rich people that's that we lost. Not even to mention like just you know like non-famous people or family members as well and friends or, or associates that you may have known. Mm -hmm. So um, so many people lost their life life this year and it's just like it really humbles you and it really like bring you back down to earth and really be like man i'm just i'm just glad to be alive yeah you know it's like it's not even about nothing else i'm glad to be able to call my mom or, or be around my mom or yeah. you know or be around your friends and, and, and show that love like because if you're here it's it's a blessing especially now so, agreed it's so special I love that. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Any goals that you have majorly for 2021? Um, just to, to, to try to go harder than I went in 2020. Like, <laughs> just, you know, just to continue. Uh, take the momentum of 2020 and, and just, like, take it to the next level. You know, yeah. like, New Year's already started for me. I tell people that all the time. I'm not, like, I don't gotta, I'm not gonna wait until the ball drop. Yeah. To be like, oh, now I'm gonna go do it. <laughs> like, no. This, this end of the year, new year, it's, it's still like, just work hard, you know? Agreed. Agreed. That's, that's, but my New Year's resolution is to um, add on to my team that I already have um, missing pieces uh, or what, whatever's missing or whoever can enhance what's already going on and, yep. just, um, and just go harder, like put in more work. Like, I love that. Do my, do my part and um, have make sure the team do their part and just just keep going that is and if you're a better person just be a better person uh just yeah spend more time with the family and just work amazing harder. i'm all here for it you've already had like three albums in three months i mean how are you gonna top that <laughs> uh, that's that's the, that's what i have to figure out I have to like, <laughs> like maybe three four five movies i don't know but it just have to be it's just the work and, yeah. and i'm not and i don't have to like do more albums than I did. Like right now, it's like a point to prove, and it's my time, and it's something that I want to do. That like set a trend that's different in music. Yeah. So that's like the goal with that. So I don't have to do that again. Or yeah. I may, I, I record a lot. Um, <laughs> so maybe I will drop four, five, or six albums. <laughs> I don't know. We're all but, excited. We're all excited. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But but yeah, my whole thing is just to make just to keep working and just outdo myself. Art love it, love it, love it. Oh man, so as an amazing artist, actor, and the protege of the King Jamie Foxx, with such an amazing future ahead of you and you've already achieved so much, what does it mean to you to truly give your all or nothing? All or nothing, that's like my slogan of uh, now or never. Yeah, which was like uh, that was the album that Jamie Foxx executively produced. It came out uh, 
before I put Black and White, I dropped an hour and never. Wow. And that album, that, that was the one that just like opened all the doors. But now we're never, um, it, it, it's just what it say. It's now we're never like, stop yeah. waiting for it. Stop waiting for the next opportunity. Stop waiting for the next day. Like this is right now. This is your time. There is no other time like the present. And mm -hmm. this is it. And it's like, let's get it. Let's yeah. don't play with your life. Don't play with the success. Like opportunity do, do, doesn't care who grabbed it. Somebody got to grab it. Somebody got to get it. So why not be you? you know? ah, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> and that was my last question for you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, that was a great interview. You look beautiful, by the way, too. Oh, that's so kind. Yeah. Thank you. I love your shirt and that poster in the back of Tupac, my hero. Oh, thank you. See, so, so yeah, my guy, Raphael, Raphael he's a real dope um, painter of... Uh, uh, Where's he from? Um, I think he's from the UK, but uh, I, a guy from the islands uh, originally, black, um, super dope. And I, I was in a Tupac All Eyes on Me movie. Yeah. And he did um, he did that painting for me. And I have other paintings around the house that he did for me. I told him I'm gonna always keep those because you know they're super dope. And then shout out to Jen. Jalen Smith, he did that. That was one of my performances a couple years back. Love uh, it. The one I dropped now or never. And uh, he made that a super dope collage. This is like my little small home studio setup. So when some like doing, you know, stuff at the house, I, I lay ideas here. I love it. Let me show you something. This is what. I'll... Have you seen this picture? Oh, of course. Leonard Jefferson sent it to me, the guy who took it. What? Yeah, he took That's... it and he sent it to me. I interviewed him. <laughs> Hold on, I, I gotta show you something. <laughs> let's see if I got, let's see how, if I, if I have it right here. Oh uh, man. Wow. This is like my lucky yeah, card. This is like crazy for me to have. Dang, I hope I, I hope I can. Aha. Uh -huh. I have what? something for you. Wait. <laughs> you see the picture and then you see me. <laughs> I play, I play two snap. And this is like, we did a reenactment of that. Yeah. So that's the photo of that. Oh, you're killing that's me. Now crazy. we're matching. <laughs> <laughs> now we're matching. That that's is so crazy. Cool. Favorite human beings, Tupac. Legit, legit. Like Tupac, Michael Jackson, my heroes of all time, man. Oh, yeah. Tupac, Michael, Malcolm X, oh. uh, Muhammad Ali. Um, it's, there's a lot, but those so are many. some of my guys. But you'll get there. You're somebody's hero too. You're know, doing incredibly well. Oh, yeah. I'm all looking gotta, forward to it. I've got to keep working. That's it. I'm my, I'm my daughter's hero now, so I'm, I'm pretty good with that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. She's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I will leave you to the rest of your day. And thank you so much for spending time with the All or Nothing podcast. And we're going to keep following you and looking forward to your work. And vice versa. Um, whatever you guys need on this end, you got me. Um, I'm a fan. I'm a supporter of your uh, platform as well. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And take care. You as well. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>